Okay, so we'll get started with question one. We'll start uh, with prehistory. In 1887, Newton S. Conway unearthed the largest and most complete mastodon skeleton, almost 70% complete, on his farm in Catawba in Pleasant Township. Where can you find the Conway mastodon on display today? Ohio History Center. All right. Question two. First opened in 1919, the Vogue shop on South Fountain was a downtown staple for many years with the owner's son taking over in later, later years. What was the son's name? And there's a bonus point if you can write down what his commercial catchphrase was. I'll leave these up, give you guys a second to, to look at them. But when we go over the answers, they'll right before it, they'll have the answer uh, another time. So you'll get one more chance to see them if you need them again. Hello? Yes. Can you see it all right? All right, question number three. This late 1960s band was named for what local company? Question four, Dr. Linus Russell's 1886 steam-powered horseless carriage terrified people with its reckless 25 miles per hour speed and eventually caught fire. Nonetheless, Russell had patented his invention. Name his local patent attorney. And for a bonus point, name his most famous clients. This is one of my favorite things in the museum, the, the carriage that we, or the, the, the boiler part we still have from the, from the uh, car there. All right, question five. International Harvester was making SUVs before they were cool. The truck on display at the end of the National Road Gallery at the Heritage Center was one of the last made in this series, made by International Harvester. So, this is the wrong slide here. There was a picture on it, the slide that I did before. So I apologize if you are not familiar with the truck that I'm talking about. Uh, but it's a great big blue truck that's in the gallery. Uh, so if you know what the, the, the sort of SUVs the International Harvester made, you'll know what it was fun. Question number six. This local radio personality was the mother to a famous comedian. So we're looking for the, the name of the radio personality shown here. And there's two bonus points available here. If you can name the radio station uh, where she was at and the comedian that she was the mother of. It was Johnny Winter's mother. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> and that's, that's, why we're, that's why we're muted. So you guys get a bonus there.
All right. Question seven. In 1914 and 1915, Dr. Benedict Titlow, shown here, was she was one of the first female physicians in the area and a doctor to the Westcott family. She started the, a baby health camp. What area of Springfield was the baby health camp located at? I couldn't find my favorite picture of her. We've got a great picture um, from during World War One of her and her uh, nurses. Uh, and a nurse's uniform, and it's a really wonderful picture. I could not find that one. Question eight. This Springfield-born illustrator did covers and illustrations for a number of magazines from the early 1900s through the early 1920s including the locally published Women's Home Companion. So we're looking for the name of this illustrator. And for a bonus point, you can give me the name of the illustration technique that he's best known for. And if you're, if you're around locally now, this is something that's, that's become more topical lately. Question number nine. This is a multi-part question, so I'll give you a little bit of time on this. So this is street names after and before. So we'll give you the name of the street now, and we want you to give the name of the street that the street used to have. So we've got a few for you. Um, a, Fountain Avenue. B, give me the former name of Wittenberg. Well, these are all avenues, I think. Uh, C, like the former name of Bechtel Avenue. And D, the former name of McCright Avenue. Question 10, the name Laganda, which you can find all over the area, came from a Shawnee Indian term meaning what? All right, question 11. Considered to be perhaps Clark County's earliest settler, this man settled in the New Carlisle area. Looking for his name. Question 12. William Whiteley built an agricultural empire with his champion reaper, bringing prosperity to the place that would become known as the Champion City because of his innovations. What did he do to convince farmers that his reaper was the best?
Question 13. Jim George's, shown here, had a popular lunchtime place by the Regent Theater. You can give a couple answers here. Uh, what was the name of the restaurant? If you want to add next, another bonus point, I didn't put that on here. What was the specialty, uh, their beloved specialty sandwich there? And they, this is a specific one because the bonus point is where can you still order that sandwich today? Someplace locally in town. Question 14, one of my favorite pictures ever. On October 13th, 1946, guests at this hotel received a rude awakening when a New York Central Lines refrigerated margarine car plowed into the lobby. They're looking for the name of that hotel. And it's a bonus if you know where the hotel is, what's there now. All right, question 15 is another multi-part question. This one has five parts. Um, it's just a bunch of years, <laughs> but if you, if you know the years for certain things that, that happened in the area, we've got um, A, what year was Springfield founded? B, what year did the Heritage Center slash City Hall slash Marketplace building open? That's where we are. What year did Catawba's Harvey Haddix throw a 13 inning perfect game that wasn't really a perfect game uh, with the Pirates? C, what year was Clark County founded? Springfield founded in 1803. What year was Harry Center? 2001. No. Harvey Haddix, 1959. Jewish Clark County founded. 1803, what year for? And then E, what year was Ferncliff Cemetery established? Right, question 16. This Springfield-born jazz, blues, and gospel singer went to Springfield High School and studied music at Wilberforce University, singing with the likes of Count Basie and Lionel Hampton in the late 1950s before moving to Canada in the 1960s. She was the elder sister of another jazz legend, Johnny Light. So we're looking for her name. This is a pretty obscure one. Actually, all of these might be obscure. I'm very sorry. Question 17. This is another multi-part question that could be worth four points if you can give me all four. Or if there's more that we've forgotten about, I'll give you all the bonus points. Uh, what were Springfield's four well-known nicknames? So there's four things that Springfield is, has been known for and, and four names that we get called. They make for good t-shirts. Uh, that you can wear to show your pride in, in Springfield. Um, name as many of the four that you can think of. So do you have the end of the pike, whole city? Yeah. You have to just look that up. Okay. All right. Question 18. 
This man's 1897 obituary stated that in South Charleston, 90% of the area homes at the time of his death had been built or remodeled by him. They were actually going to do a, a talk on him uh, in April, but it got canceled because of everything getting canceled the last two months. Question 19. What was the name of the Kroll Collier magazine that was published for employees? And the last question before we get into the answers. This local comedy duo was popular in the 1920s and 30s, making a number of short comedy films for Fox and RKO. Looking for the name of the duo, or you can give me either one of their names if you know them. Now we're going to move on to the answers. So uh, if you guys want to unmute yourselves, I don't know if I can, if I should just mass unmute everybody if you want to, if you want to talk, but I'm going to go over the questions. You guys can, can say the answers. Um, Unmuted. So feel free, feel free to talk and, and share anything else that you, you have that you want to share um, about the, the, the answers here. Okay, so question one was about our uh, Mastodon Conway, who was found in, in Catawba. Um, does anyone know where you can find him today? The State Museum, the museum? Columbus State History Museum in Columbus near the fairgrounds. Yeah, he's at the uh, Ohio History Center. Not the Heritage Center. No, yeah, no, he's, at, he's at the Ohio, the History Center in Columbus. Oh. Um, off of uh, 71, uh, if you guys know their, their big building there. Um, there's a picture of him down here. Uh, a couple years ago, they actually turned him around, but he spent, he spent a good chunk of time, about 25 years in Columbus at the um, Ohio State had him. Um, and he was in one of the, I believe in Orton Hall there. And then they, they moved him to um, the, the Ohio History Center in the 70s. And he's been there ever since. Um, and sometimes I think, man, I wish we could have him here. And then I think, we do not have room for a mastodon. <laughs> we could, we could find room. <laughs> we could find room. We might have to I, I have periodically asked for something. it back. Um, <laughs> yeah. So we've got some, we've got some um, other things from the collection having to do with mastodons and mammoths um, that, that we've got. Um, I know I myself have a mastodon license plate. Um, a percentage of that goes to the um, Ohio History Fund, and I just like having a mastodon on my car. Um, <laughs> So, okay. Question two was about the Vogue shop. So we're looking for the owner of the, uh, the, the, the name of the owner's son. Anyone out there knows that? C.H. Rosenfield Jr. of the Vogue. Yes. Yep. <laughs> and what was his commercial catchphrase? Your daily fashion reporter. For C.H. Rosenfield Jr. Uh, yeah, he was your daily fashion Just reporter. Just for the case, you be able to do it yourself. I remember post- for C.A. Roosevelt. Yes. So give yourself two points if you, and, and we'll give you the your daily fashion reporter because that's what he referred to himself as. Um, we've got here, this was a, a, an ad from 1958 um, for their 39th anniversary. 
<clears throat> All right. Question three. This late 1960s rock band was named for what local company? And I'll give you a bonus point if you sing their most famous song. Buffalo Springfield. Yeah. There's something. One point for singing? I think that should be more valuable. We'll give you more points. <laughs> we'll give ten, you all ten the points. points if you sing. Oh, what is the worst exactly. What is the worst? There's a man with the gun. Over there. <laughs> uh, I say we actually have. I say I don't know if my husband's still on the call. He's got he's got a sign that he got from somebody. Um, we have multiple signs at the Heritage Center, so I said we were he didn't need to give it here. But uh, uh, this is our this is our steamroller. We actually have two of them. Um, the working one was restored and was used to roll out part of the parking lot. Was that two summers ago now? I can't remember. Um, oh, yeah. So two, yeah, two years ago. Two years ago. Um, so it, it, is, it is a working steamroller. Um, question four was about our uh, Dr. Linus Russell's horseless carriage and his patent that he received for it, even though um, it burned down the barn. Um, that, it, that it was in after he, after it went on a very scary ride. Uh, so we're looking for his patent attorney. Does anyone know? This will save his clients. I think we're the Wright brothers. Yeah. And what was the, what was the, the attorney's Harry name? Tullman. Right? It was, it was Harry Tull Tullman. Tullman. And uh, he had... Hey, Wright brothers. So the statue that he has downtown that you guys are probably familiar with is over across from where his office was at the Bushnell building. But he also had an office here in um, in the marketplace. Uh, but I guess they probably didn't put it there because we already had uh, O.S. Kelly standing out on the on the Esplanade there as a as a book um, up there. But yes, he was the patent brother for our patent attorney for the Wright brothers who who came into town um, to use him. Give me Question five: right. His home was on North Fountain Avenue across from the uh, Station One Firehouse there uh, just north of the building where Station One Food. Food car. So, it, so by the hill there where, where, where um, Wards, Water Street is? No, on Fountain Avenue right across from the oh, I'm over a block. firehouse downtown. Just south of the bridge. Okay. Oh, south of the bridge. I did not know that. And they first met with him on a Sunday at his home there on Fountain Avenue. You don't happen to have a picture of the home, do you? No, there is no. There's no known picture? My knowledge. Okay. That would be really cool thing to come across someday. Okay. Our next question five was about the. Um, International Harvester SUV. Um, so, if you, what was the name of the the truck we have in the in the? Travel. Yes. Travel. Some more, a little yeah. bit more about um, yeah. International Harvester. Should know that one. Including, um, someone gave us a bunch of pictures right before they tore down, um, and and we real there was a great picture of the we have the restored whistle, and we they had a really nice picture of the whistle before. Um, that's a new picture there. Question six. This local radio personality, um, you guys have her name? Alice Bowman. Alice Bowman. The radio station was the ICE -E and comedian Jonathan Winters. Jonathan Winters. There we you got him right there. And I love I love this picture here of him as a baby because he looks <laughs> you can you can tell it's him. <laughs> He's got one of those faces. Had, had those cheeks his entire life. <laughs> he has. I love it. And we've got, we have a WIZE cookbook um, that Alice Bauman put together um, in the collection that I think is really neat. Um, and their house, the, the Rogers home was um, where little is, was Littleton Funeral Home. And um, the, her, her family home, the, the Bauman. Yeah, I remember that because they were my competition when I was doing weather reports at WBLY. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got question seven. This is about our Dr. Benetta Titlow. 
Uh, so she had the baby health camp. Does anyone know where that was in Springfield? No. Wasn't it near the standpipe? That's right. Yeah, Virginia. I'm giving myself. Yeah. So I'm I'm wondering if it was actually on the standpipe hill there because you can see there's kind of a this is a picture we've got of it there's a there's a hill there. Um, it could be up here. The standpipe could be up here. Yeah. So we've got some some great great pictures of the camp there, and we've got one of our one of our um, yeah. one of our ledgers has a a, a, a Titlow yeah. liniment yeah. recipe. The water tower might be up here. Uh, it's near the water tower. Yeah. Okay. All right. Question seven or question eight. This is about our Springfield born illustrator um, who illustrated for a number of magazines, um, Life magazine, um, but locally for Women's Home Companion. Um, and there was an illustration technique that he was best known for. And uh, if you've been downtown lately, it's it's on one of the buildings. Uh, so his name was C. Coles Phillips, and the hey. technique is called uh, fade away. So so this is the one I've I've got another slide I think I didn't mess these slides up that has uh, the one downtown now. Um, but it, the fade away technique is that um, so uh, so that it disappears into the background. Oh. Hmm. And we've got a lot of the original um, Women's Home Companions um, because we have a lot of the publications that were done here um, at Crow Collier. Um, so there's a lot of really neat publications in there of his. Um, but this is this is what's downtown. Um, I believe this is next to Seasons right now. It used to be the life, this one here, the Batgirl, used to be um, where the new Springfield mural is, the one that, the big one that spells out Springfield. Um, but they took that down so they could put the, the mural there and then they've been moved over. Um, no, uh, not seasons. It's, Stella by, it's by Stella Blue. That's right. So over a block on um, on Fountain. So, um, but I know that they were announcing that they were all they were up, and it was after all of this had started. So, so no one's really been out much to see all of it. Uh, so that'll be something that people can enjoy now that um, that there will be patio dining and, and some of those places will be opening back up. Question nine is our after and before for street names. So does anyone know what Fountain Avenue used to be? Market. 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 That makes yeah. a lot of sense. That's the market is there. Um, how about Wittenberg? Mechanics. Factory. 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 Yeah. Okay, how about Bechtel? This was a surprise. I have a list, so I'm going to share the list with you in the next yeah, slide. I did not know that one. Here, I'll go to it. So it was called George, and um, which I, I need to I need to look up more about that. And McCrite was was called College Avenue, um, but there's actually two sections of um, East McCrite and West McCrite were called, I believe maybe two separate things. But I think they, they were both called College, but there was another section that was that had a different name. But um, I have a link here um, to all of the, and I can I can post this later. Um, we had uh, one of our volunteers actually typed up the full list that we had a little booklet that was given to us um, that was uh, typewritten and we, we retyped it so we could share it online of all of the Springfield street names that have changed and there was hundreds of streets in, listed in there so I just picked a couple of um, random ones out of there but if anyone's interested in looking at the rest of them um, there's there's quite a few that have changed over the years. Yeah, uh, Natalie, if we, if we want to go back to Jonathan Winters for a minute, um, yeah. Dave just uh, left a comment in the chat. Uh, Jonathan Winters used to sit in my grandmother Bernice DeMint's office at Gorman, Beskauf, etc. law office and draw cartoons for her. Really? <laughs> oh, oh. Wait, I almost pulled that out of my ear. Um, oh, I did right. We have a book of his paintings right behind me. Huh. Wait, can you hear me when I don't have my earphones? Okay. Kind of. Yeah. So we yeah we have a book of his paintings right behind me. Um, I had not known, until I saw this book sitting on our shelf. I did not know that he was an illustrator as well. Um, Natalie. Yeah. My husband's grandmother lived on the corner of uh, Fountain and College Avenue, and if you look at that home today, if you look up at the second story, Market Street is on a little sign. Right oh. That's really oh the the and the home still standing. 
Yes. Okay, I'll have to look. 601 North Fountain. But if you just, it's just interesting because if you look up, yeah. it, it's right on the house. That's really neat. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so question 10 is about Laganda. Um, <clears throat> what, do we know what, what Laganda means? The Shawnee no. Indian term. Does it mean buck? It does. It means buck corn. <laughs> and that's why they call it Buck Creek, which I did not know until I was looking this up. Because mm -hmm. in my head, I was like, oh, I want to do a question about Laganda because it means crooked river and then i looked it up and i realized it doesn't mean crooked river why is that in my head because i'm from northeast ohio and cuyahoga means crooked river <laughs> so i got them mixed up so that is why um buck creek and laganda creek are the oh, same wow. i always wondered why they had the two different names and i think over time buck creek just became used more often but they they are the same because they mean basically the same <clears throat> Okay, question 11, Consider to be, uh, so this is our, um, possibly the earliest settler in the county, um, was in, in the New Carlisle area. Does anyone know his name? Jonathan Donald? No, John Paul. but he was also, <laughs> yes, whoever said John Paul, it's John Paul. John Paul. And we've got, this is his, uh, the house, it, this was a later home. I don't believe that this was the original, original home because... Uh, I think that they, there, no more research needs to be done on, on that homestead, but it, it's, it, this was it in the 70s, and all that's left now is, um, is not. Um, it fits a foundation, I think, um, over in that area. It's over in the area of their, um, <coughs> the name of there's a, there's a new allotment over there right before you get into um, Lake Avenue when you get actually into New Carlisle, I mean, um, New Carlisle Pike. Question 12 um, was about William Whiteley and what he did to convince farmers that his reaper was the best. And for the people that are our tour guides on this call, they, they probably know this one because this is one of the, the, our favorite stories to tell people um, when we get to the reaper in the museum. Does anyone know? Yeah, he um, was cutting out. Hitched himself to the, uh, unhitched the horses and hitched himself the machine and pulled it himself to show mm. that it was very very easy to use um i'm a little i'm, I'm kind of disappointed because this year we were going to have i don't know if ed kranz is on here i know he, he had signed up but ed was going to play uh william whiteley at our night at the museum oh. this year and i i said oh ed you got to pretend to hitch yourself to the reaper <laughs> and i think he was definitely going to do that so that is I'm, a shame I'm, I'm sad we had to cancel night at the museum this year so maybe he can do it next year all right Question 13 is about our uh, Jim George's restaurant. Um, you guys know what it was called? Jim the Hatter. Jim's, wasn't it? Just Jim's, yep. Yeah. And uh, what was the sandwich? Olive nut. Chopped olive. olive. Chopped olive. olive. Mm -hmm. And do you know where you guys, where you can still order it? Mountain on Main, yeah. Yeah. I got to say, I ordered it. It was weird. <laughs> they're, they're they're awfully weird. <laughs> they are delicious. It was not. It was. I guess I should have expected it, but I guess I'm. I'm not a huge olive fan, so I yeah, probably should have known I wouldn't. Wouldn't like it the that best, much. The best drink that went along with that in the winter was a hot malted. Mm, a hot malted. <laughs> Good. Like hot chocolate. Is that is that hot chocolate, Barbara? It was white. It was vanilla mostly huh. when I got it. I've never even had a malted, but that sounds delicious. Coffee cups. <laughs> So this is, this is a, we've got a very tiny picture of the menu here. Um, but I know that, yeah, the fountain on Main, you can, you can get uh, all of that. Uh, question 14 was about our, our train wreck into the, uh, the hotel. You guys know what, which hotel it was? Francis. Francis. Francis, wasn't it? Well, it was the Francis at the time, but Larry, um, you know, do you remember a couple weeks ago when we were, um and i think bill's still on the call i sent him the picture i i it seems like there may have been two fountain hotels oh. uh one was where the francis was and then one was uh where the myers market was because um bill sent the picture after after our talk and it, yeah it is, is in fact on the other side and it says very clearly fountain hotel on it and the other picture i have has fountain hotel very clearly on it so 
We'll need to do a little more, more research on that. But at the time of the crash, it was the Francis Hotel. Okay. I see Virginia here. She, uh, we, we recreated that last year. Um, that was our peep scene last year was the, was the, uh, the train crash. And Rayanne, I think, is still in here, too. Uh, she helped with that. Uh, so here's another view of it that shows the, the Heritage Center across, across the way because it's where the library is now. Um, and we, we honestly have nightmares about that. But now that we've had our, our really big nightmare of a flood in our building, um, a, train, a train seems like, like a lesser problem almost. Don't say things like that out loud. I, I <laughs> at least we have a parking lot. Well, no, I should not say things. Just don't let the virus in. Don't tempt yeah. fate. <laughs> all right. So our year's question. What year was Springfield founded? 1803? 1801. 1801, yeah. 1803 is Ohio, but technically not Ohio because I remember there was some... Three was some Early sort of 1950 died yeah a legal issue with ohio that it wasn't really there he said it was at 2001 well no no so that we're, uh, we're talking about how well, old are so how 1950 died 1890 Mark County 18. founded 1803 what year first clicks out established so so the heritage center was actually built in 1890 but yeah we moved in in 2001 harvey haddock's um not perfect perfect game was in what year 57? 60? Yeah. I thought I heard Dick yell it out. I think you did. It was, it was 59. Um, and what year was Clark County founded, if you were paying attention a couple of years ago when they were celebrating it? Was that 1950 died? And, yeah. Uh, yeah, 59 was the game. 1818 was when Clark County was founded. So they had their 200th anniversary two years ago. And what year was Ferncliff established? 1866? No, a little bit earlier. 63? 63. Yep. Oh. So we've got 1801, 1890 for the building, 1959 for Harvey Haddix, 1818 for the county, and 1863 for Franklin. Okay. And the next one was about Johnny Lytle's sister, who was a jazz musician. She's actually, as far as I can tell, she's still alive. Um, I could not find anything about her dying, and when I did research on her a couple of years ago, she was still alive. Um, does anyone know her name? Bob, are you still on this call? The whole sizers? I'm pretty sure he's the one who donated the, the record that we've got here. Ada or her, Lee. her name was Ada Lee. Um, so we've got here, this picture here is her about just a few years ago. Um, right. Uh, 17. Okay, can you give me Springfield's four nicknames? Champion City. Rose City. Rose City. Yeah. Home yeah. City. Home City. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Town at the end of the pike. And the town at the end of the pike. Oh. There you go. <laughs> four of them. So you can give yourself a point for anyone that you got there. I love the new uh, Rose City mural out here um, next to the Bushnell building. I do remember that from uh, one of our downtown tours. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> I think. You guys know what the home, what, what, which homes it was named for? Why it was called the home city? One of the, the KFP, IWF, uh, Sonic Home. Yeah. And, Sonic Home. Sonic, yeah. The county home. And then. Well, I think it was the fraternal homes, I think, that it was named yeah. for. Okay, and then 18, the, the next question 18 was about our man in South Charleston who built or remodeled just about everything in the town. Does anyone know that one? Not he, had a, he had a kind of a double name, which I find kind of funny. His name was Edward Edwards. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I know Sue, Sue Mattinson is the president of the Historical um, Society there, uh, the Heritage Commission, and I know that they, they, were, they had done a talk about him in state. Um, she interviewed a lot of the residents in town who lived in his um, homes, and they, they have a, had a lot of information for a talk there, so that was interesting. And hopefully they'll be able to reschedule it for later this year. They, they've given it before. Okay, 19. How about the, the name of the Crow Collier magazine for employees? I Jim, you're still here? Hello. I say, I think Jim, Jim was working yeah, on yeah. this one. 
I'm here and I forgot it. You forgot the name. <laughs> you you went through most of them. Yes, Bill McGregor was saying hello. Hello, yep, there he is. That's it, Bill. It was the Hello magazine. Somebody <laughs> actually got that. Yeah. Now, that's, I, that, one, that one seemed hard to me. <laughs> yeah. So these were, and they're, and they're, the, they're really great. Uh, Jim actually worked on uh, indexing them. So we've got, and, we're, and I've got another, another volunteer who's scanning them all. Um, so we'll, we'll someday get, have those scanned that we can put them up online for people to see. Um, okay, our last question is about our comedy duo. Does anyone know their well, their name? Kind of, that's an obscure one. <laughs> it's it's a little known. Yeah, Springfield story, and there's a reason it's little known. <laughs> they were only active for about uh, about 15 years or so. Um, it was Clark and McCullough, Bobby Clark McCullough. and Paul McCullough. Hmm. And they were kind of, they never got made it as big as the um, Marx Brothers because, um, well, they, they didn't make it through the 30s. Uh, Casey, we, 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 this one may be a little obs too obscure. Apparently it is. Yeah, I, and, and see, that's one that I thought more people would know. But, um, I mean, uh, crit the way critics talk, Clark and McCullough were on their way to becoming the next Marx Brothers or becoming the Marx Brothers. Um, they were just as funny. They were like the Marx Brothers. They were vaudevillians crossing from the stage into onto the screen. Um, but uh, uh, Paul McCullough actually wound up killing himself. He had he had a nervous breakdown and um, uh, was released from the asylum. And uh, on his way home, wound up killing himself. So they're career never happened yeah. and that's why very few people <laughs> have heard of them uh, but they actually remember? they actually met here in springfield at the y uh, the ymca taking tumbling classes um from what i've read when they were little boys and they literally ran away and joined the circus together <laughs> when they were in their mid-teens and that was how they started their vaudeville career if you guys remember andy mcginn uh, who used to be with the news son he was a big fan of them and he he did a uh, some program well, from them and he had some other videos um and then you can find them on youtube um but that's that's our that's our last question i know that some of those were very obscure um i'm curious how people how people did if you want to um say or put in the chat um so i think there was a total of like 30 something points there if you got them all um i only had 17. <laughs> Well, now, now, who all sang? I thought I heard Terry singing. Um, so that's Terry, another Terry, 10 Terry points. extra 10 points to you for singing. I had 17, too. Bye-bye, everybody. I'm ashamed. I only had 11. Well, hey, I'm, I'm happy people got, got some. This uh, is fun. It's been interesting. Yeah, it was. Bye. Yeah. Well, thank you guys all here for, for, for joining us. We hope you had fun. Eat the bar, job. Yeah. Your, thank, a, uh, thank you. Secret arts quest. Well, oh, I say that it was really hard to decide which questions to do because there were millions of questions that we could have done. So <laughs> we kind of just uh, randomly picked some things, and you know, so we could we could do this forever. Um, but we were hoping that maybe people might might learn some things and about local history too. If you didn't already know the stuff. Thank you. Thank you.